Hey y'all, my name is Tyson. And this week we're gonna have a look at how you can model wires, cables, stuff like that. So uh, some time ago in one of the live streaming sessions, I did a session on how to do just this sort of thing. If you look back here at all these cables and, and that sort of stuff, that's what we're gonna look at. We're gonna look at kind of the core ideas that you should use when modeling this sort of stuff. We went into a lot of depth in that longer session, but we're gonna to try to condense it for here. Let's have a look. So we've got this sort of uh, generic, uh, what do we call this? A switchboard of sorts? When we model these type of wires and cables, the method that uh, I'm going to show and that I'm familiar with at least is to start by creating a spline. Everything depends on that first spline. And to do that, let's review a concept that you may know about, but just be sure. I'm going to draw an arc here and bring this out, let's say half uh, to a half circle. And then I'll draw. A sphere and let's just say we're going to make this pipe so we'll use follow me to create this the thing you need to be aware of is when i look at the end of this can you see right here it doesn't actually meet into um, the side of this wall at a directly perpendicular angle and let me undo and we can see why that is because these arcs when they're drawn they actually come away from the surface they're drawn at, at a slight angle. So if you want it to meet perfectly, what we need to do in this case is we could draw a few edges to start with, or I'll just bring this out and then draw in the red direction here and back here. And then I'm gonna triple click to select all of those connected edges and use my keyboard shortcut for welding them. Now this is a welded polyline. Now when I use follow me, it's going to meet up with that surface perfectly. Quick look at the hidden geometry and we can see uh, as well how that works. So that last little line segment is one of those things to keep in mind. Now we could use arcs on some of these examples and that would work fine, but I'm going to use the native Bezier tool. So draw Bezier curve. And uh, for a while that was an extension, it may be in, but if you don't have that, go out there and search for just the Bezier curve from SketchUp, from the SketchUp team. The other thing I'm gonna do, I've set this up, these are all components, but I'm gonna draw a line from the center and just draw it out a couple inches. The exact length doesn't matter that much. It doesn't need to be that long, but you can see all of these now have that line and that's gonna help us as we draw some splines. So let's start with a simple example. Let's just draw say from here down to here. So draw a Bezier curve. Aaron created a scale builder on how the native Bezier tool works. I'd encourage uh, looking at that for more information. I'm gonna start here somewhere on this edge. That's my first point. Then I'll draw somewhere down here to this edge, maybe the midpoint somewhere on here. That's my second click. And then I'm gonna go back to the first one and make sure I'm lined up with that edge that I drew. That's gonna help bring this, start this Bezier curve uh, coming out correctly, and the same thing down here. I'm gonna hover for a moment and then come away. And if we look at this, that has helped us create a nice curve coming in and out of those points we wanted. Uh, now, that doesn't it finally meet exactly, but that's that little straight line segment that we talked about with the arc. I'm gonna draw a little line from this endpoint down here. One, two, three, triple click to grab that. Weld it. And now we could use follow me to create a nice pipe. 
uh, or wire or cable, whatever that is. And follow me can be useful because if you wanted to have a different shape, let's say we wanted a flatter cable for whatever reason, and that's the shape we wanted. If I select that and use follow me, then we get something like that. So follow me can be very useful if you want to create a different type of shape than just a simple tube. However, I'll do that again. If you do want to create a simple tube, round tube, another quick way to do so is an extension called pipe along path. So let me select our path and then go up here and say pipe along path. Now, this will create actually uh, an inside and an outside if we wanted it to. We could create a tube, but in this case, let me just say, maybe I want a 0.8 inch. I don't want an inside diameter, 18 segments. This all seems fine. And there we go. So without creating a follow me shape, pipe along path can be a quick way to do this as well. Let's do that say to this one. And in this case, I have this line drawn here. Let me see, if I triple click, I should have all the pieces. I'm gonna weld that and then just use that as our pipe along path. I'll use the same settings I just had and we have this nice path weaving in and out of this switchboard. Well, let's say we take that same curve that we just created. So I'm gonna undo that. And I'm gonna copy it over here some distance. Um, let's just say five feet so that I can remember that and move it back when I need to. In fact, I didn't need to copy it. I could just use the original one. So if I take this and I use pipe along path, That creates a group inside this group. If I select this is still that original line or spline uh, or polyline. So if I take this, I'm going to copy it and undo that. And then I'll paste it so they can get on the outside and group that. And you'll see why in a moment, but I'll move that back five feet. I just want to preserve this spline that I have. And there's multiple ways to do that. I could have just made several copies. But the other tool I wanted to introduce here is this one called Helix. It's called Helix Along Curve. I believe this is also a free plugin. Pipe Along Path, I think, is a free plugin. So I'm going to take this and say Helix Along Curve. And this gives me the option for a starting and ending radius if I wanted this to start and end smaller or larger. But I will just start this radius, let's say it. 0.6 inches, the exact amount doesn't matter a whole lot. Laps, this is gonna be how many spirals are created along the series of this, of this uh, polyline. So let me turn that up a bit. I don't need a whole bunch, but something like that. And the other piece here is I create a tube. Yes, yes, I wanna do that. And the radius, let's, let's see what we get from that. So we get this really cool, winding spiral helix. And if I move that over five feet, then I have this cool combination. Now I could obviously use just either one of those alone, or I could use them together to create the effect I want. In fact, if I wanted that one, and maybe I'll do it once more, this time, we will make the tube, let's say larger and a few less laps, but we'll make this smaller, let's say 0.3. I don't know, let's just see what happens. And we move that over five feet and then we get kind of a different twisted type of effect going on by combining those. So th there's a lot you can do with that plugin. It's very cool. So again, the Helix plugin, 
and the pipe along path. In fact, let's do one more here and let's come and draw a new line. Let's say, let's draw one more and we've got a lot of stuff going here. So how would we wind another tube in here? If you're drawing with the helix, I'm sorry, not the helix. If you're drawing with the native Bezier tool, it can be helpful to, let's say, give ourselves a little uh, guide here. So let's say we want to come out from this corner one. We want to try to get around these, but come under these wires and then wind back down somewhere. So we may need to create something of a guide. So if I move this out, something like that. I might simplify this just for the time being, uh, but you could create several guides, obviously. So let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. So I come in here, I start, let's from this point to the middle of here. And then like we did before, I wanna hover for a moment and bring this out. Looks like I'm a little bit off there, but it will still make this work. A little bit careless. Does that come around? Yep, that, that does what we want that to do. And then we want this other piece to come here and then wind in somewhere else. Draw up as a curve and let's start from the midpoint there. And let's just say we're gonna try to get it to come down to this one perhaps. There. Now, <clears throat> I may not be able to do this quite, but let's find out. You can add additional control points with the native Bezier tool that would give you a little more control, but this may just wind in underneath there. Oh, well, we're going through that one. So uh, I may need to undo and redo that. Let me see if I can do that again. A little bit of hit and miss when you're drawing these. The other thing is there are other spline tools out there that give you even more control than the native one. I'm gonna stick with the native tool here, but there are other options like Fredo Spline and some others. So let's see, draw Bezier cool tool. If we look down here in the degrees, there's three. I'm gonna say four, and that will give us an extra point of control. So let's try this again. One two, and then I'm gonna come back here and start this out correctly, three. Now we have one more point of control. So I want this, we're gonna weave this inside here a bit, four, and here's our last point. There we go. Did we get that? That looks better. All right, I can erase out this point that we don't need and the way that comes in, maybe I don't like that, but we'll leave it for now. Draw our little final edges. Again, this one I, I messed up a bit, but we'll make it work here. Oh, that one's way off. We're still gonna use it for the sake of time. I'll select all of that, I'll weld it, and then use something like pipe along path. Or we could do something where we take the helix tool and instead of creating a tube, let's say no, and let's turn the laps down to uh, not too many, let's say nine. Let's see what that gives us. That gives us a bit of a wavier solid race. Oops. this one, but with that bit of a wavier one. Now we could use that one, run Helix again on this. Let me go inside, grab this. And this time we will create a tube. So just lots of options you can play around with uh, in these methods. A lot of things you can do to, uh, to make this work and be kind of fun.
Very cool. Very cool. All right. So with that, hopefully that gives you some ideas on how you can create like cabling and wires and stuff for your own projects, whatever they may be. Um, just those few tools. If you create a good starting polyline, and again, there's other tools to, to do that with than what we use, but just that native Bezier tool does get you quite far. But you can use that and, and have a lot of fun. So just use follow me, use pipe along path, use the helix, uh, helix along curve plugins, and you can have a lot of fun. Now, in the live modeling session, I also went into some additional methods for creating kind of cables and pipes. And that's what we're going to do in a second part to this. So this will be part one of creating cables and look out coming soon for part two, where we're going to show a different way to, uh, you know, create some really interesting effects. And uh, hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that was you know, gave you some ideas of things you can try and we'd love to jump in the forums and show us what you create. Let us know in the comments if you thought this was useful or if you have some other ideas because we get a lot of ideas from you. Let us know and it's your first time around, please do subscribe because we, we put out these videos pretty often so you can look forward to more. Thanks y'all.